Here we are again, folks. This is Brother Peter with Tidbits from the Word. So proud to be with you again today. And I want to go to Psalm 73 and talk to you a few minutes about something that I have received of the Lord and the counsel of God in my heart, in my life. And this is my testimony that God came into my life when I was headed straight for hell, ready to perish, set on suicide hill, didn't know what to do, and the Lord touched my heart and said, you need me. And I bowed my head and I looked up to heaven. I didn't bow my head, I looked up to heaven, I held my hand and I said, God, I am a sinner. Forgive me of my sin, come in my heart and save my soul. And he did. And this is what God gave me. Listen to Psalm 73 and verse 25. Whom I have in heaven but thee, and there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. Now you've got to come a long ways to get to the place where you can desire God and God only. When you uh, do away with the pleasures of the world and desire to have fellowship with the Lord God of heaven while you're on this earth, knowing that in heaven you and he are going to be like this. And that's how it's going to be. Whom I have in heaven. It said, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Now God is the strength of my heart. Not only now, today, on this earth, but he is forever the strength of my heart. For lo, they, they that are far from thee shall perish. David had just talked about in Psalm 73 that he was envious back when he was uh, carnal minded. And he saw the sinner man with a new car and a new house and with plenty of money running out every night and doing things and, and having a ball. And he said, I was envious of him until you showed me his end. The end of that man is terror. The end of that man, when he dies, he dies in terror. And he goes to terror forever. And he's going to be in hell burning forever. They that are from thee shall perish. He said, far from thee, they will perish. They have destroyed all them that go away from God. Uh, he uses the word here, a whoring. That's loving the world when you're supposed to be loving God. Be careful you don't love the world. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all his works. Wow. In Jeremiah 3.3, 3, 31, 3, excuse me, God said, yes, I have loved you. Because he was talking here to Jerusalem. But now he's talking to you and I, the grafted in Gentile. And he says the same thing to us. Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. He said, I've given you everlasting life and an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you. With loving kindness, God has drawn us to him. And that's what we need to commit. Listen to what we need to do. In, in Proverbs 16 and 3, it says we need to commit. Uh, uh, you commit our works or your works to the Lord. And your thoughts will be established. If you will commit to God early in the morning, get up in the morning, commit to the Lord, and say, Lord, I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer today. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread. Jesus taught that to twelve men. That is a manly prayer. That's not a child's prayer. That is a manly prayer. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Listen, that prayer is for every adult, man, woman, boy, or girl, to pray. Every person, but especially an adult. And, and 
Who, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, Psalm 24, 3 and 4. If you have clean hands in a pure heart, you may stand and can stand and will stand in the presence of God while you are in this world. I listened to a little tape by my father who died in 1997. And I, I listened to a little tape the other day, 20 minute little thing. And he said, is the ground you're standing on holy? You know what he said? If you're following God and you've committed yourself to him and you are his child, the ground you're standing on is holy. The ground has to be holy that you're standing on. God will hallow the place that you're standing and we said in the Lord's Prayer, Hallowed be thy name. And God's going to hallow his name, and he's going to hallow it through us on this earth. And that's the way it's going to be. So he said, Rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord, your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and great of great kindness. Listen. Joel 2.13 If you or I have got away from the Lord, usually the first thing you do when you get away from the Lord is you quit tithing. Tithing is 10% of everything you make belongs to the Lord. The minute you quit tithing, you're on the opposite side of God. He said tithes and offerings and even other gifts. Now, tithing is does belong to the God, to the Lord God of heaven. If you make $100, $10 belongs to God. If you make $400 take home pay, I always tithe on what I want to make or the gross. But anyway, on your take home pay, if you make $400, $40 should go into the collection plate every Sunday in the church where you have your letter. If you are in a church and you have your letter there, it is your obligation to put the $40 God gave you, entrusted you with his money to give back to him. You say, but Brother Peter, right now we cannot afford to do that. I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot afford not to do it. Because the day you start doing it in earnest with God and get honest, he will make it to where it multiplies. Where you will have more. Hey, by the way, we found that instead of paying two seventy five for a loaf of bread at Dollar General, we go to the Dollar Tree and pay one dollar for the same exact loaf of bread. So God made a way for us to save a dollar seventy five on every loaf of bread that we buy. We can put that money in the church. We can help somebody with that money. We can be free to give that money or help somebody with that money. Surrender your heart. And check it out. And find out where you stand with God. You know ornaments and perfumes are a delight to the heart and sweetness of a man's friend uh, brings delight and a hearty counsel. Proverbs 27. Listen. There are things that delight there are things that delight God. And what delights God is what you do in, in when, that He commands you to do and you're obedient. That delights the Lord God of heaven. Listen to Psalm 8 and 9. O oh Lord, my Lord, our Lord. He said, O oh Lord, our Lord, my Lord. How excellent is your name in all the earth. Is the name of God excellent to you? If you hear somebody uh, taking the name of Jesus in vain, do you say, hey, hey, Father, you're talking about my Lord. You say, hey, hey, Father, you know, you're talking about my Lord. That's the one that saved me. I used to take his name in vain too. But I don't anymore. And haven't since he saved my soul. Now if you lack wisdom, if any of you lack wisdom, he said in James 1 and 5, if you lack wisdom, let him ask God, who gives to all liberally, 
God gives wisdom liberally to you. He's got this whole book, 66 books between two covers that are full of the wisdom of God. And if you want it, all you got to do is get in it. And he does it without reproach. And it will be given to him that ask a seek or knocks. If you ask, seek, or knock, or get into it, he will give it to you. He's not going to give it to you now if you don't seek it. He's not going to give it to you if you don't ask for it. He's not going to give it to you if you don't get in it. You're going to get it by the same way you breathe. How do you breathe? You open your mouth and you go... If you didn't do that, you wouldn't get in the air. <laughs> Shut your mouth and your nose up. Then don't breathe. You don't get in the air, do you? You're dying. That's the same way you're going to live spiritually. If you don't put this spiritual book in your life, you're going to die spiritually on the vine, and you're not going to be worth a grain of salt. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Those of you who are here in this excerpt, pay attention to what Brother Peter's saying. Get in the book. Hallow the name of God on a daily basis. And you will, you will come out at the other end where you're supposed to be. This brother Peter with tidbits from the word. I must go now.